Guys, 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 today the day has finally come where we're talking about the Grand Prix Final, which was a very interesting competition because the competition was so close for the men and the ladies for two different reasons. The ladies mostly because consistency is nowhere to be seen, and for the men, the skill level is very, very high and very, very close. The ladies are also at the same level, but because of the chaoticness of their nature, which it sounds like I'm being misogynistic, but I promise I'm not. This is just the circumstances of this Grand Prix season. And you know what? Let's start with the chaotic nature that we can always expect from the lady. In sixth place, we have Ryon Sumiyoshi, who it's very sad that she ended up here in last place because she had just so much potential at the beginning of the season by landing that quad, being a lady from Japan, being 20, showing everybody that not just the teen girls from Russia can do this, and then we end up here. The double footing that she had at the last competition continues to haunt her here in her short, and the sad thing is that besides all those fumbles that she did in the jump, she also really wasn't able to show showcase any of her other technical skills. And then in the free, she once again wasn't able to deliver the quad, which I think at this point is just burdening her, the fact that she knows she can do it, that she did it once and hasn't been able to. I think the pressure is just a little bit too much and she's a little too inexperienced to these high stake competitions. And again, not being able to deliver this quad seemed to just suck all the energy out of the rest of the program. For Rian, honestly, she might just not be ready. She's just not ready for these high stakes and these Grand Prix competitions back to back to back. All the potential that she showed us, just how high she can soar, makes it extra sad to see her here in last place and to see her crumble at the Grand Prix final of all places. The good thing though is that she did make her mark. She is the only girl in this entire Grand Prix season who have landed a quad and she has definitely kind of bust through the scene. Like now I'm always going to keep an eye out for her because I know what she's capable of and I just hope that next season we get to see all that potential to realize because she is still that 20 year old who landed a quad. And now we just need the training and the confidence to unlock what we know that she can do and make her a consistent competitor. Rion has to build up the trust, not just with me, but with the fans, the judges, and then herself. Also, would love if she get better programs that showcase her strength. In fifth place, I am sad to say that it is Isabeau Levito. And this makes me sad because Isabeau once again succumbed to a high stakes pressure situation. This is something that is starting to become a pattern pattern, which makes me nervous for her career. Because as soon as she began her short, I could just sense the nervous energy, which is never a great sign to feel the skater's nerves just so tangibly. And then she popped her first jump. And to me, the first jump always sets the tone for the rest of the program. And seeing her mess it up told me to keep my expectations low because then she also messed up her second jump. Not falling, but barely holding on and almost coming to a complete stop at landing, which is a bad habit that she does have. The program was starting to kind of set itself up as an uphill battle. And after that, every other jump just looked excruciating for Isabeau. She then tried to pick up the program back up through her step sequence, but to me, this short program's choreography and song choice are just not built for that kind of pickup situation. So by the time the short program ended, it almost felt like a fizzle rather than a spark. And Isabeau's face showed just how heartbreaking the situation was to watch, let alone experience for her. In the free, we were all just hoping for redemption since after the short, the podium felt so far away and not even a possibility. And a fun surprise for the free is that she got a new dress, a new costume, which I'm not sure is a great match for this program because this program is light and airy and the dress just looked heavy, literally heavy with all those gemstones and dreary with the black dark color. It wasn't giving fairy tale like it should have for this musical choice and theme. However, on the technical side, Isabel started with a full redemption arc on her opening jumps and that good energy seemed to transfer into the rest of her programs because even though some jumps might have not had the best technique, she still landed them cleanly enough and with confidence. And by the end of her free, you could just see the redemption had been complete and the joy on Isabeau's face. You could also tell the crowd was cheering for her in every step as we were all wanting for her to get this win. Not being able to win the competition, but being able to redeem herself. That is a win in and of itself. However, with the bad short, the chance at the podium was long gone and Isabeau had to walk away with fifth place. In fourth place, we have the young, Belgian Nina Pinzarrone, whose consistency has finally paid off by giving her a near podium experience at the Grand Prix final, which is an amazing position to have for your first senior season. And just like I predicted, if anyone messed up, Nina Pinzarrone was there to swoop right in and she will surpass you because the ladies' discipline is just that close in terms of skills. And her shirt was good, her jumps were stable, and then in the free, Nina proved herself to be a reliable skater once again as she had a good outing this entire competition with no falls. Yes, some of the landings 
ones were a little bit shoddy, but still no falls. It will be interesting to see Ninette's journey as she continues to be consistent and see if her ranking changes once the judges start rewarding her for her consistency through the component scores. Nina's goal next season, I think, should be to make a name for herself by having an out-of-the-box program, a fun program, something that really catches your eye, and or introducing harder skills. Only then do I think that she will be able to truly be a name on the scene rather than just a consistency darling. Then in third place, we had Hana Yoshida. And although I detest her green leopard dress, I have become a fan of Hana Yoshida. I confess this season that I've become a fan of her, not just of her, but of this program. There is something about Hana Yoshida that just gives off charisma, star power. But sadly, star power can't land your jumps because she fell hard out of that triple axle. And although she did have another fall later on in the program, Hana did not let it derail her from giving energy the rest of the program. Something about Hana just makes me feel not nervous when watching her, even though at this point she had two falls under her belt for the short program. Hana ended the short with grace, saving it with not only her charisma, but her choreography. And then in the free, Hana truly came into her own, starting by nailing the opening triple axle, the same jump that had made her fall really hard in the short. And after that, she absolutely bodied every element and jump afterwards. This was probably her best free, including the step sequence and my favorite little hand dance towards the end, which we did together because me and Hannah are just that girl right now. <laughs> Have a connection right now. Afterwards, you could see not only Hannah Yoshida's absolutely elated by her performance, but also her coaches seemed ecstatic. And I have to say that Hana Yoshida is probably my favorite discovery of the season as I grew to love both of her programs, which is hard to do. And I genuinely think that Hana could be the future of Japanese skating, especially with the amount of charisma that she has when she's dominating the ice. When she's doing good, she's doing really good. And I can't wait to see her star rise next season. In second place, we have the forever fan favorite, the Belgian Luna Hendricks, who always has charisma to spare. She made me a little bit nervous in the short because her opening jump had a bad landing, but she quickly recovered in the next few jumps and gave the audience what they wanted, which is more armography. You got it right. She is the queen of the armography. <laughs> Even in the private little dance for the judges, it was executed to perfection and it is always the crowd pleaser. In the short, Luna had a great outing that could have turned very bad if she let that one first slip up affect the rest of her program, but she didn't let it happen because she is a strong skater mentally. In the free, Luna showed even more resilience and more armography as she vogued her way through the jumps. And once again, she had a slip up in the jumps, popping her double LUTs, but she quickly recovered, covering her mistake with, you know it, more armography and always giving face. It also helped that the rest of the jumps were sufficiently clean. I also really enjoyed Luna this season, not only because she is the only one that embraced the party vibes for both of her programs, but also because she feels complete. I feel like I know who Luna is as a person, as a skater, and her programs showcase her best assets. And she's proven to be a true competitor, earning her the reputation as a mainstay at every competition. This season, feels like Luna's victory lap after last season having her triumphant rise, taking that opportunity of the Russians being out. And so Luna walks away with high prize of silver at this Grand Prix final. Then in first place, we have the girl to beat, the one, the only, Kaori Sakamoto from Japan, who continues her winning streak at this Grand Prix final, which I believe to be her first title of winner of the Grand Final. Kaori's first place is so well-deserved because her skating skills are far beyond anyone else at this competition, and her jumps continue to be the most powerful for the ladies. Essentially, whenever Kaudi skates clean, no one else truly has a chance. And Kaudi had a great short with high, incredibly high stable jumps. Also, the princess program of the short is starting to grow on me because it's so pretty. But I still believe that Kaudi's skill set is best showcased with a more powerful theme. And then in the free, she killed it again, having the highest jumps with the best technique, the fastest speed, and undisputably the best skating skills of the entire competition, which made Kaudi the runaway winner of this competition. Even though she did have a bad step out on a jump, Jump, but this single mistake is just not enough to derail her from taking first place. Then we move on to the men's, which was surprisingly more chaotic than that of the ladies because of our sixth place competitor. I am sad to say that our favorite underdog came in in sixth place at this Grand Prix final, Mr. Frenchman Kevin Amos. The short started strong, but in his second jump, he had a bad landing. And as soon as that mistake occurred, I was on high alert of what else could come of that. But to my surprise, he held it together for the rest of the program, even ending it with a cheeky smile of like, oopsies, I made a mistake. <laughs> and so I knew this could only mean one thing. Time to brace myself for the free program because he is in sixth place. Because either everybody else had outstanding performances or Kevin royally messed up in the free. So the free did not start great with a bad landing in his first jump and then popping his second quad of the program. And then Kevin had a fall, but
but it was his signature Kevin fall, where it just looks even more horrifying and scarier than any other fall you've ever seen. Because I feel like he hit his head on the ice. I feel like his head rebounced from the ice. And now I'm concerned, not just for the program, but for the high, high chance that this man is continuing to skate with a concussion. After that bad fall, he had another bad fall where he even looks a little out of it. So now I'm just praying that he stops if his body is telling him to do so. So then Kevin takes it upon himself to recover the program through his intricate choreography and amazing stage presence, which he kind of almost does, but I'm scared for his next jump. And he smartly pops out of it instead of withstanding another fall. Then he decides to pop out of the next jump after that. And at this point, I think we're all starting to wonder if he indeed has a medical situation going on because he's choosing to protect his body rather than fall again. However, he tries once more and it comes with a fall. At this point, I can't really tell if Kevin is just sad about this outcome or seriously hurt. Probably both. And so he once again decides to take his frustrations out through the choreography, which he nails, but it is sad to see how emotional he is about this loss and how emotionally charged his choreographic sequence becomes because of this loss. And so this is how Kevin Amos ends the season, befalling to his personal curse of messing up at the last moment when it matters most. I really hope that next season Kevin can prove all of us wrong and end on a high. In fifth place, we have Kao Miura from Japan, who I didn't think had a chance at the podium, to be completely honest, just because of how many technically skilled big names are at this competition. However, knowing Kao, I know he was going to give it his all to prove me wrong. Unfortunately for him, though, his first jump had a wobbly exit, and the same thing happened for his next jump. For me, the crown jewel of this program, his short, is his step sequence, where he truly displays his power, his speed, and his skating skills in a way that matched the intensity of the music. And besides those few bubbly exits and his jumps, Kao had a good short. One thing I learned about Kao's free program from you guys is that the music is from an anime called Attack on Titan, and so is his costume, which is based on a specific character. And while I do think this context makes me appreciate it more, I am still not feeling it. <laughs> However, I do want to say that I was right about this music being for a human sacrifice, because Attack on Titan is specifically that, and so this music is background for human sacrifices. However, for Kao, he did not have a perfect opening. However, I have to emphasize that the speed at which Kao is going into all these jumps is very impressive and add to their difficulty, in my opinion. Kao did manage to recover in the next jump, giving us a good step sequence, but once again, we enter this roller coaster of emotions because he steps out again in the jump after that. Essentially, the mistakes across both programs were just too many to propel Kao into the podium, especially here at the Grand Prix final when he's competing amongst the best. We move on to fourth place with Adam Xiao Hinva, who I am surprised to say is in fourth place. Adam did not start this competition on the right foot, pun intended, because he popped his first jump of the competition, but he recovered, giving me a good performance of my favorite short program of the season. And then for his free, he manages to salvage his first jump through some act of magic. I don't know how, he was completely off his axis. And he continues to do so throughout the program, not falling, but having shaky landings and exits. Adam definitely did not have his best outing at this Grand Prix final, but it wasn't a complete mess. However, honestly, from this point forward in the competition, it is just so tight a competition between the men that even if they all had a clean skate, people would still complain that their right one did not win. Simply said, all these little mess ups were not mistakes that Adam Xiaohen Fa could afford to do at this kind of competition, hence why he ended up in fourth place. Also, shout out to Ted, who at the end of the program called him Adam Sihu Him Fa, caught the mistake, but did not correct himself. Great work, Ted. <laughs> in third place, we have Yuma Kakiyama, my little prince, who had a great clean short with well-executed programs paired with explosive choreography, even though I still hate the song. <laughs> at this point, I just feel very proud of Yuma as he continues to have a great comeback season after a long break due to injury. Then in his free, he started with a dud as he doubled his planned quad jump, but he swiftly recovered by landing his next quad and the next one after that and all his jumps. Yuma had a great rest of his free, demonstrating that he is here to stay. Yuma, I think, should be very proud of what he has been able to achieve this comeback season. Being able to walk away with a bronze medal after a long break is not easy. And if the rumors are true that Shoma is going to retire, maybe even after the season, then Yuma is slotted to be Japan's number one man very soon. Excited to see what he does with that title next season. In second place, we have the man to beat of last season, Shoma Uno, who has probably my second favorite short program of the entire season. He had a great short with clean jumps and the best skating skills of all the men in my opinion. And he had probably the best performance of this specific short program to date, which I grow more obsessed with every day. Love the music, love the costume, everything is perfect. If Shoma had this great of a free, then I was ready to sound off again, asking why Shoma is in second place. But then I saw his free. And in his free, Shoma had a great start, but midway through, he popped his triple axle in such a nonchalant way that I 
almost missed it. However, Shoma recovered by nailing every jump after that and even adding in more jumps, including the triple axel that he missed before. There was probably one shoddy landing here and there where he had to hold on for dear life, but he made it through. So I wonder if Shoma Uno had a clean skate, would he have beat Ilya here in the Grand Prix Final for 2023 as he had done in the past? Who knows? We'll never know. Because alas, we have our winner, the young American Ilya Malinin, who made history by adding the famous quad axel, also known as the quaxel, in his short program, making him the first person ever in history to land a quad axel in a short program. Additionally, he looks to have revamped his costume, which I love. It looks more glittery, which matches his I know I'm the best confidence slash attitude. And Ilya, besides making history, had a great short program. Like, yes, his skating skills need to be refined, but his showmanship plus unbelievable, like impossible, <laughs> almost unbelievable. Technical abilities make Ilya skating very compelling. Also, this program is just fun and you can see Ilya enjoying himself on the ice, which is always a joy for the fans and the judges alike. Then in his free, he also had a more glittery costume, which I always welcome, but he started by missing his signature jump, the quad axel, which is very, very rare. He usually lands his jump. It's his signature jump. However, he did not let that deter him at all through the rest of the program. Instead, this fall seemed to fuel him as he landed quad after quad, jump after jump, and channeled all that energy into his step sequence. The reality is that Ilya has flourished this season into a leading man, a starring role in the world of figure skating and its history, embracing the nickname the Quad God and carrying the GOAT tag proud. And the fact that he still has room to grow only makes me more excited about his career as he is still so young. And I just know that his first Olympics is going to be electric. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the Grand Prix Final, a competition full of close calls, both from the ladies and the men, full of chaoticness, more from the men than from the ladies, which I am surprised by because stability has not been the name of the game for the ladies. And I genuinely hope that Kevin Amos is okay physically and mentally because it looked like that fall was the perfect case study of a concussion. And I really hope that this didn't break his spirit because he was doing so good. He was doing so good mentally and physically. And now I feel like we're taking three steps back. And I just hope that we continue to see depth in new countries as we have seen with Belgium. And I hope that the ladies get their skills up and Ryon Sumiyoshi lands at Quad Axel and manifesting it next season. And now that we know that the Russians are coming back at the Olympics, it's really gonna be a bloody, bloody battle to get there. And yeah, let me know who was your favorite skate. Who did you think should have won? Was the placings correct? correct for the ladies and the men. Let me know what was your favorite programs of the season. My favorite short programs were definitely Adam Shahunfa, then Shoma Uno. And for the ladies, I would have to say Luna Hendricks takes the cake for me and Hannah Yoshida for sure. As always, shout out to Timothy, Natalia, Leslie, Tori, and V, and you watching this video. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.